Welcome! In this video we explore the captivating history of the last surviving Hindu kingdom in Southeast Asia. This Indonesian kingdom remained largely independent until the late 19th century when it came under Dutch control after a prolonged period of conflict in 1906. Join us on this exciting journey through history as we delve into the fascinating remnants of Hinduism in Southeast Asia. First, I want to express my gratitude for visiting my channel. I hope you enjoy the video. Without further delay, let's embark on the exploration of the history of this unique Hindu kingdom. Between the 1st and 5th century, and possibly even earlier, major Indianized states started to emerge across Southeast Asia. The Brahmins, the priestly class of Indian religions, traveled from South Asia to outer regions, bringing with them new religious, philosophical, and political ideas. They followed Indian merchants and travelers through Southeast Asia, where they encountered flourishing kingdoms. Local rulers in Southeast Asia, seeking advantages over their rivals, embraced the opportunity to access concepts of social and political order, as well as innovative technologies by inviting Brahmins to serve in their courts. One of the key concepts that these early kingdoms in Southeast Asia adopted was that of the universal monarch, or Kakavartin, whose divinely ordained authority extended across space indefinitely. With the assistance of Indian Brahmins, local rulers facilitated the spread of Hindu and Buddhist belief systems across Southeast Asia. However, it is important to note that despite the expansion of these new Indian religious systems, earlier beliefs such as ancestral worship were not entirely displaced. Instead, Hinduism and Buddhism integrated these existing ideas into their frameworks. The adoption of Indian cultural elements was a slow and incomplete process as many people in Southeast Asia retained much of the traditional religions as well as political systems up to the present day. The origin of Bali's interaction with the Hindu and Buddhist transformations in Southeast Asia remained uncertain. Throughout its early history, Bali held less political power compared to other Southeast Asian kingdoms and its more influential neighbor, Java. Some theories propose that historical contact between Bali and Java played a significant role in the adoption of Hinduism and Buddhism in the early centuries. Some of the oldest evidence of Bali's engagement with Indian religions comes from a collection of ancient sun-dried clay stupas and seals. These clay stupas bear impressions of Buddhist images and fragments of mantras dating back to the 8th or 9th centuries. The mantras were written in a northern Indian script and are associated with the tantric tradition of Buddhism. Interestingly, these stupas exhibit striking similarities to those found near Borobudur in central Java, which was constructed in 824. This suggests a possible connection between Bali and the Shailendra dynasty of central Java and Srivijaya in Sumatra. In the 5th century, the Chinese pilgrim Fei Xuan traveled to Ceylon and subsequently returned to China. Due to the hazardous weather conditions, he was compelled to stay in Indonesia for several months, during which he provided some of the oldest foreign accounts about maritime Southeast Asia. Of particular importance regarding Indonesia was his observation of numerous Buddhist statues found across the different islands, coexisting with idols of Hindu gods. An exemplary illustration of this Hindu-Buddhist fusion can be witnessed in the stone temple of Goa Gaja near Abud. The cave embodies iconography from both Buddhism and Hindu Shaivism, indicating that Buddhism was a prominent religion among many people and states during that time, coexisting and occasionally intertwining with Hinduism. By the end of the first millennia, Bali thrived due to advanced terraced rice cultivation, making it one of the most prosperous producers in the region. This wealth fostered a strong relationship between Bali and the neighboring island of Java, often marked by intermarriages between Javanese and Balinese royalty. Erlanga, the founder of a new state in Java during the 11th century, was the offspring of a Balinese king and a Javanese princess. He eventually became the ruler of both Java and Bali from 1016 to 1049, and at least two of his descendants continued to rule over Bali until the late 12th century. By the end of the 12th century, the Hindu kingdom of Singhasari successfully conquered Bali, where it eventually formed the Majapahit Empire. The Majapahit Empire, which came to dominate large parts of Indonesia, 
the Malay Peninsula, and the Philippines, established its capital in Galgal on Bali. Galgal remained the center of power on the island even after the collapse of the Majapahit Empire in the second half of the 17th century. From the 11th to the 15th century, Bali existed as a semi-autonomous kingdom variously controlled by Java. However, the 15th century marked a challenging period for many Indianized Hindu states in Southeast Asia, primarily due to the rise of Islam in maritime Southeast Asia and the arrival of Europeans. By the 14th century, the once powerful Srivijaya Empire on Sumatra had collapsed and Malacca emerged as the dominant commercial hub in western Indonesia. The founder of the Malacca Kingdom initially followed Hindu Buddhist beliefs but converted to Islam around the early 15th century. This marked a significant shift in maritime Southeast Asia as Islam began to replace Hindu Buddhism as the predominant religion. It is worth noting that Islam had been present in Southeast Asia since at least the 7th century and Muslim communities had existed for centuries prior to the 14th. In fact, the oldest Islamic Sultanate in Indonesia was established in northern Sumatra around 1292 under Sultan Malik al Saleh, the first Muslim ruler of the Sumadera Pasai Sultanate. As the Majapahit Empire declined in the 15th century, new states ruled by Muslims began to emerge around the trading centers of northern Java. The increasing influence of European traders in Southeast Asia contributed to the decline of previously powerful Hindu Buddhist states. The spread of Islam in the Malay archipelago and the subsequent collapse of the Majapahit Empire led to a significant migration of Hindu Buddhist priests and elites from Java to Bali beginning in the 14th century. While Hinduism waned in other parts of the Malay archipelago, Bali experienced a cultural resurgence of Hinduism as a result of this new influx. During the 16th century, Bali underwent a period of consolidation under the capital of Galgal, which expanded its control over the entire island and expanded into eastern Java and Lombok. During this period, earlier Buddhist traditions gradually faded and merged into the unique form of Balinese Hinduism that is practiced to this day. Despite the growing influence of Islam in the Malay archipelago, Bali remained largely unaffected by its impacts thanks to the flourishing of Hinduism on the island. This was primarily due to Bali's political consolidation under Hinduism and the active promotion of the religion by the state. It is important to note that Balinese kings did not openly oppose Islam. While there was a significant Muslim minority on Bali, most Balinese people had little inclination to adopt the religion. The Balinese kings even tolerated the presence of Muslims, and there are instances of mantras in Bali that incorporated Islamic invocations. Scholars have identified several reasons for Bali's persistence as a Hindu stronghold despite the increasing dominance of Islam in the Malay archipelago. One reason could be the relatively limited contact between Bali and Muslim states in the early period, which allowed Bali to develop largely undisturbed by external influences. Bali's geographical isolation from major sea routes also played a role. With a lack of significant harbor until the 19th century, Bali did not have a strong presence in international trade. Most importantly, Bali reached this peak of prosperity when Hindu kingdoms in Indonesia were declining and being replaced by powerful Islamic states. This strength allowed the Hindu kingdom of Bali to gain control over Lombok and parts of East Java, becoming a formidable force against the rising sultanates. The spread of Islam into the Malay archipelago initially occurred peacefully as there is no evidence of foreign states invading Indonesia to impose Islam through conquest. However, once Islamic states were established in Indonesia, Islam spread to new areas in some cases through warfare. It is crucial to understand that Indonesian sultanates did not primarily initiate wars to propagate Islam. Like conflicts elsewhere in the world, these ones were rooted in dynastic rivalries, strategic necessities, and economic motivations. Similar to how Buddhism and Hinduism were utilized by Southeast Asian states in the first millennium to consolidate and expand power, Islam served a similar purpose in the region. 
Historians explain that the rise of Islam was facilitated by emerging rulers in Malay archipelago who used the new religion as a means of state consolidation. While Sumatra and Java were significant centers for the spread of Buddhism and Hinduism for several centuries, the spread was not uniform. Historical sources provide limited information about many parts of Sumatra and the Javanese coast prior to the spread of Islam. In some cases, towns only emerged as a result of Muslim settlement, and Hinduism and Buddhism had little cultural influence in these areas. This may explain why Islam found more acceptance in certain parts of Sumatra and Java and not others. For Bali, the island had already reached its peak of power and prosperity, and Balinese kings saw no reason to shift towards Islam. They viewed Hinduism as the ideal means to consolidate their power instead. For instance, during the early 17th century, Indonesian sultanates had established their power and became significant rivals to the Dutch imperial interests. The Dutch East India Company engaged in conflict with the Mataram Sultanate on Java during this period, while Bali had been also involved in ongoing conflicts with Mataram. In 1633, the Dutch sent an ambassador to Bali court in Galgal and sought an alliance against the Sultanate. However, in 1639, Mataram invaded Bali and the Balinese king requested Dutch assistance. Ultimately, however, the Dutch did not intervene, but Bali was strong enough to repel Mataram alone. However, in 1651, the Galgal Kingdom of Bali experienced internal conflicts, leading to its collapse. A new royal seat of power was established in Klung Klung, north of Galgal, -Gal by 1686. However, Balinese unity fragmented, resulting in the state being divided into nine smaller kingdoms. These kingdoms engaged in succession wars among themselves, which persisted until the late 19th century. For the rest of the modern period, Bali remained isolated from the rest of Indonesia, while the Dutch consolidated control over much of the archipelago, they mostly ignored Bali due to its lack of valuable trade goods. Bali didn't have a significant harbor until the mid-19th century, and it wasn't located along major trade routes, so the Dutch didn't see much incentive to colonize it. That was until 1855, when Dutch officials arrived in Bali primarily due to salvage claims on shipwrecks, which eventually led to the Dutch invasion of Bali. It took over six decades for the Dutch to fully establish control over the entire island. But even still, Bali continued to maintain its rich tradition of Hinduism long after its incorporation into the Dutch East Indies. Although Indonesia is predominantly a Muslim country today, it's important to note that similar to the spread of Hinduism and Buddhism, Islam's spread was not uniform. Muslim populations are concentrated in Java and the coastal areas of Sumatra, Kalimantan, and Sulawesi, which have the largest populations in Indonesia. However, large areas of the interior of Sumatra, Kalimantan, and Sulawesi are predominantly Christian. Nusa, Tenggara, Timor, and Maluka also have a Christian majority. Even in Muslim areas of Indonesia, the historical influence of Hinduism can still be felt. The Ramayana and Mahabharata revered works in Hinduism hold great significance in both Javanese and Balinese cultures due to the historical legacy of the Majapahit Empire. For many Javanese people, these supposed Hindu influences are seen as distinct aspects of local Japanese culture rather than being a product of Hindu belief systems. But that concludes our brief history of the ancient Hindu kingdom of Bali. Once again, thank you for visiting and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe to stay updated on future videos. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Stay safe and goodbye.